Well, hello there, Clyde and Eden. I thought I'd just do you a quick little video to help you with some of the key concepts underpinning our unit on hot deserts and food insecurity. Cast your minds back right to the beginning of this unit where we were discussing where the world deserts are and what their conditions are like. So, imagine that I have the globe and this is half of Africa that is spinning around Africa in there and this would be a bit of Europe and Spain. It's not completely to scale or accurate but it gives you the rough idea. This is the equator. That is the line of zero degrees latitude that runs around the middle of our planet and it is above the equator that the sun is most intense and hottest. What we're interested in are the 20 degrees to 30 degrees north and south. So that's 20 degrees north and 30 degrees north. And it is between these two lines of latitude that we find our hot deserts on planet Earth. And the one in Africa is named the Sahara. It's the world's biggest desert. Now, the reason for deserts occurring between 20 degrees north and 30 degrees north is that the air descending over the deserts is dry. So there is no moisture and no clouds can form because there is no moisture that can condense to form those clouds. As a result, you get no precipitation occurring between 20 degrees north and 30 degrees north. Instead, you get the full heat of the sun that serves to create very high temperatures in the day, 40 to 50 degrees Celsius in the daytime. But because there are no clouds, that normally would trap some of the heat of the day and act like a little duvet cover over the planet, keeping it a bit warmer, because we have none of the clouds to do that, at night time, we can see temperatures get down to as low as zero degrees Celsius centigrade and below. So a huge temperature range that we experience here at the deserts. Let's just deal with some questions to check that you're on track. At what degrees of latitude will I find hot deserts? Good, between 20 degrees north and 30 degrees north, well done. What is the name of the world's largest desert that can be found at these latitudes in Africa. The Sahara, well done. What is happening to the air above hot deserts? Good, it is sinking. And what property does that air have? Good, it is dry. Dry and sinking air. During the daytime, what temperatures can be reached in a hot desert? 40 to 50 degrees centigrade, well done. And what will happen to the temperature at night? 
good. It falls to zero degrees centigrade or even lower. Why does the temperature drop so low at night? That's right, because there are no clouds to insulate the air and so all the heat is lost out into space. Brilliant. One last thing I want to share with you is that this air that is sinking will then travel over ground back towards the equator. And this air moving from the hot deserts to the equator will create fast or not fast, that's a bad word, we'll say strong winds. So these deserts are often uh, places of strong winds that can lead to sand storms. Now by the time they've reached the equator, they have become warmed up by the surface of the earth and as they warm, they start to rise, form clouds through the process of condensation and then we get very heavy precipitation occurring over the equator. Because of all that lovely rain, we then get the formation of nice, thick rainforests at the equator. In between the hot deserts where there's no rain or less than 250 millimetres a year, we have a, a place where there is some rain. A little bit more, but not as much as the rainforest. And we can mark that with grasslands. And this, my dear Clyde and Eden, is the Sahel. The zone on the southern edge of the Sahara. So there you go. That is the overarching idea behind what we've been studying and everything else to do with food insecurity in the Sahel, as well as um, the ways to combat desertification in the Sahel is related to this climate model. And we call this circulation of air from the equator to the hot deserts and back round again, we call this the Hadley cell. And it's one of three cells that are part of the global circulation model. And it is just important to say that what's going on in the Northern Hemisphere is also going on in the Southern Hemisphere. So we have cool descending air here, coming back round, warming up and rising up to form rainforest. So we can also expect to find some deserts down here, like the Namib, in the southern hemisphere, also between 20 and 30 degrees, but that is south rather than north. Some last questions then. Why is it dry where hot deserts are found? Good, because the air is dry and sinking and no clouds form, so there can be no precipitation. Well done. What happens to the sinking air once it reaches the ground? Excellent. It travels over ground towards the equator, getting warmed up as it goes. At the equator, because it is now hot, what happens to the air? 
excellent. It rises and that's because it's less dense. And as it rises, what process can we expect to occur? Good. It will condense to form clouds and then that will be followed by heavy rainfall. And what kind of environment or biome would I get forming at the equator underneath this heavy precipitation? Rainforests, excellent. What kind of biome or environment will I find along the southern edge of the Sahara in between the desert and the, for the rainforest? Good, that is the Sahel. Excellent stuff, well done. Finally, what do we call the circulation of air from the equator round, down over hot deserts and back round again. What is the name that we give to that circulation of air? Yes, that is the Hadley cell and it is part of the greater global circulation model which has three cells. Good, well done and have a nice day. Bye-bye.